Hello, everyone. This is going to be our review for our unit four decimals. So let's take a look at what we're going to see on the test uh, that is going to help you review all of the different skills and strategies that we've been doing for the past few weeks. Now, here we have two different numbers and there are several tasks that we have to do. We have to write it in word form, the way you say it, expanded notation, the value of the digit, and then we're going to compare it. So let's get started. Let's say that perhaps you have a number that looks like this and it's 4.5500. One thing I can do is I can write my place value chart and I, I would have my hundreds, my tenths, my decimal, my ones, and even my tens. And if I put the number in here, I would see that the four is in the ones place, put my decimal down, five in the tens place, and a five in the hundreds place. So my place value chart is very important. That's something that you should always consider writing down. So let's take a look at this. I said that this number, if I say it out loud, it's four and 5,500. So I will write it down with words, four, the decimal says and 50, don't forget your hyphen, five, and it's in the hundredths place. I always like to underline my THS whenever I am using, uh, writing down numbers that are less than one whole. Okay, so I've got that down. Now I'm going to write this in expanded form. I mean, expanded notation. Expanded notation always reminds me of parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my parentheses. And my first digit is a four. So four, it's in the ones place times one. Plus parentheses, the five, I have a five. It's in the 10th place. So times one over 10 plus parentheses. And my last digit is a five. So it'll be times one over 100. Did you know that there is a different way of writing this? Yep, there sure is. And it would be like this. I wanna show you the two different ways to write this. So I'm gonna draw a line underneath it. It would be four times one, my four, plus five times, how could I write one over 10 as a decimal? So it would be 0 0.1 parenthesis, plus my next digit is a five times the hundredths place. How would you write one hundredths as a decimal? It would be 0 0.01 in parentheses. So now you see that there are two different ways of writing uh, the expanded notation when you're dealing with less than one. Okay, so now let's go on to the next one. It says, what is the value of the underlined digit? The underlined digit is this one right here, that five, that five, its value is 0 0.5. It could, uh, its value can also be five tenths. So now I have those two and I'm, I've just given the value of the digit. Let me go on to the other number. And this is the one that I want you to practice. So I would like for you to press pause Write this number in word form, expand it notation, and tell me the value of the underlying digit. Once you're ready, press play again, and then we'll work it out together. All right, so how did you do? Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. Let's say it, four and 88 hundreds. Write it in words, with words, four and 80. Eight. What am I missing here? Yes, my hyphen. Hundreds. And I'm going to underline the THS. That's very important for me. I like to do that. Okay, expanded notation. This is the one where I can write it two different ways. So I'm just going to draw a line here because I went over. So I, I wrote a little too big, but that's no problem. So I have a parenthesis for Remember, I can put this in my, my uh, place value chart and it really does help me. 
four is in the ones place, so times one, parenthesis plus, my next digit is an eight, eight times one over 10, parenthesis plus, parenthesis. Uh, my other digit is an eight, but it's in the hundredths place, and that would be my answer. So I will now attempt to write this a different way using decimals. Same number, four times one, parenthesis plus, start parenthesis, eight times, how is it that I write one over 10, one tenths? 0 0.1 parenthesis plus parenthesis eight times. Now I'm going to write my one hundredths as a decimal, 0 0.01 and parenthesis. Very good. So my next job was to tell the value of the underlying digit. How did you do? What did you write? Well, it's an eight and it's in the hundredths place. So I'm going to say that it's 0 0.08. That would be its value. That's what it says right here. And that's the one that's underlined. I like to think of this as money as well. If I was to write it as a fraction, it would be eight uh, one hundredths, just like that. Perfect. Let's move on to the next part. So the, on the next part, it says, how is the value of the hundreds place related to uh, the value of the tenths place? Okay. How is the value of the hundreds place related to the value of the tenths place? First of all, if I'm dealing with the hundreds, I'm dealing with pennies. I'm going to write the word pennies here. And if it's the tenths place, I think of that as dimes. So if, if I'm talking about the hundreds place, uh, the hundreds place is going to be less. One penny is has less of a value than a dime. It is only one tenth of the tenths place. I know, or I can also say this, it is less than the tenths place. Whoopsie. There we go. Great. Now, if you need a little bit more help with that, this is the perfect time to ask your teacher about which value, which uh, place value is one tenth of the other one and which one is 10 times. Now, compare the decimals using these symbols. Okay, so these are my two decimals. I am still working with the ones on top. I'm just copying them here. And this is another time when if I'm comparing, I wanna make sure that I think about this in a way that is helpful for me to visualize it. And I can easily visualize this thinking of money. If I had $4.55, that would be less than $4.88. So the one that has the lesser value gets the one dot. And the one that has the greater value gets the two dots. So how are you doing? I hope that you are doing a good job. Let's take a look at the uh, different fractions. And I like this part because I get to use my highlighters. And it's always fun for my brain when I use different colors. So the first one says that I'm going to record, uh, first I'm going to represent it and then record the decimal for each one of these. So here it goes. I will start with my yellow. It says that this one is zero and 63 hundredths. I'm gonna put a big zero here because I wanna remind myself that there is no whole number and there is no full dollar. So I'm just gonna highlight 63 of these little squares. This is going to be, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It looks like I'm counting by tens here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count by tens. So that was 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then 61, 62, and 63. So I just filled in three more little sections of the 100. So this is going to be as a decimal, 
zero and sixty three hundred. I've got my decimal. I have my I have my fraction. I have my decimal. Let's move on to the next one. For the next one, I'm going to use pink, and it says that it's one whole and six tenths. So I'm going to start by highlighting the whole section here. Every single 100 little sections here, I'm going to highlight them. And then it says six tenths, but this is not divided into tenths. This is divided into hundreds. So what I can do is I can imagine that I would take off some of those lines that are going across to make it tenths. And I would highlight six rows. So it would be one tenths, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths and six tenths. There we go. Another way, okay, let me first go ahead and write this as a decimal. It is one whole and six tenths. But I can tell myself that it is also equal to one whole and 60 hundredths if I added a zero. So I'm just going to remind myself that this is another way that I can write it. That's just on the side. The next one is going to, I will, I'll use my orange. I like my orange. And it says that it's one whole and six hundredths. So that tells me that's going to be six pennies. This one was six dimes. And you know, 60 is the, the equivalent to six dimes as well. So here I go, one whole. And when you do your test, make sure that you are using your highlighters. If you don't have highlighters, you can also use light colored markers, but you want to use different colors. Six of the 100, six pennies. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm now going to write it as a decimal. It is one whole, six pennies. Hmm. Six pennies would have to have a zero in the tenths place as a placeholder, and it's right there. So my next job is to record these decimals in this chart, but I have to put them in order from greatest to least. So it's going to be G to the L, greatest to least, up to down. And that's what I'm going to do next. All right, let's make this just a little bit smaller. There we go. And let's get started. Okay, so I have 63 cents or 63 hundredths, a dollar and six dimes, a dollar and six tenths, or a dollar and 60 cents and a dollar and six pennies, a dollar and six hundredths. So if I went ahead and looked at these numbers, I can write them down here on the side. That's a decimal. And I can do my place value chart. So I would just draw my lines right here. And this is very helpful. These are the ones, my decimal, the tenths and the hundredths. So 63 cents, 60 cents, and six cents, which is the one with the greatest value, which is the one you'd like to have in your pocket because it's the most money. Yes, so we'll go with a dollar and 60 cents, one whole and 60 cents. The other one also has a dollar, so that's the next greatest one, the next least one. And then the 63 cents, that has no dollars. That's going to be a zero and six, zero and 63 cents. That's a six right there. Okay, so now I'm going to put them in order from the greatest to the least. The greatest one was one, Okay, so I'm just gonna make one change here because that was one and 60. No, it's right, this has to be a six. I need to fix my handwriting right there and then 63. So one and 60 hundredths, got that one. And then one and six cents and then zero dollars and 63 hundredths. That would be the next one. These are in order from least to greatest. How did you do? Check your answers right now. All right, so let's see what we have here. Here we, it says to write the decimal and then the fraction that represents the total amount of money. And I love looking at money because it 
it helps me visualize my decimals and my fractions. Here I have four dimes. Do you know how much four dimes is? Yes, it's 40 cents. It's not a whole dollar, so it's zero and 40 cents. So I can always start with my decimal because that's the one that I can do the best, zero and four dimes. Another way to look at it is zero and 40 cents. If I was to write this as a fraction, I would look at it and say, well, this is four dimes, so four over 10. I can also look at it as having a value of 40 cents out of $100. The next part says to represent the decimal on the, on the number line shown below. So let's take a look at this. First, I wanna see what my hops are. If this was a zero, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this would be my one whole, my one dollar. So where on this um, number line would I put my four dimes, my four tenths? So this would be one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. And I have four tenths here, so I would put my point right above it. On the next one, it says, which decimal does a point D, oh, sorry, this should be a D, best represent on the number line? Well, I need to do my hops first. I need to fig figure out how many spaces it's divided into. So if I look over here, I see that my whole numbers are seven holes, like $7, eight holes, and nine holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's divided into ten sections. That means I'm working with dimes again. Okay. And point D is right here. If this was eight, I would do one hop. So it would be eight and one tenth. That would be my answer. Eight and one tenth, which is also equal to eight and one tenth like that, okay? That is how I would put it on my number line. Make sure to always do your hops from one whole number to the next whole number. That's very helpful. For number five, it says Angelina's lunch cost this much money and she paid with $5. How much money will she receive in change? It's always fun to go to the store, to go to a restaurant and buy some food. But you always want to make sure that you get your change back if you're paying with cash. Let's take a look. See here. I'll use my pink. So where should I start? Let me analyze it. Well, if I'm going to analyze it, it looks like she bought some food and she has to pay. So I want to find out what the um, um, change is. So it would be subtraction. So I know that I'm going to be subtracting here because I'm going to give them some money because they're going to give me some food. All right, so my plan here is going to be $5 and I'm going to subtract the $2.38 from it. And that's how I would do it. Uh, so I can get started with this. And here I look at my top number and it looks like I'm going to have to borrow. So I put a four, a 10, I need to borrow one, so nine, and then a 10, a two, six, don't forget your decimals, and then a two. So I don't know if I subtracted this correctly. So one thing that I can do is I can add to check, and that's perfect. So I would take my middle number right here, and I would add it to my answer number right here, and let's see if I get the top amount. Oh, they did match $5 and $5. So that means that I did subtract correctly. All right, so let me write this amount right here. Two is in the ones place. This, there's my decimal. The six is in the tenths place and the two is in the hundreds place. Don't forget to bubble in those digits so that you have your answer. And now I'm going to uh, do the final part. This was my um, I analyzed it, I planned it, 
and I'm going to evaluate it. To evaluate it, I'm going to answer, I, I, I checked it, oh, this could be my evaluation. I did the add to check, but I can also write it in a complete sentence. Um, she will receive $2.62 change. There we go. Okay, now let's take a look at the last one. It says Stephanie's class ate four and six tenths of the pizza that were ordered. What decimal is equivalent to this fraction? Let me copy it over again. It's four whole pizzas and then only six pieces out of the 10. So they had some leftover. And if I was to write this as a decimal, it would be four holes, my decimal, and then six tenths. One thing I can do here is I can go ahead and make a um, place value chart. And this is my ones, here's my decimal. And I would see that this is equivalent to that. It's the same. Well, I hope that you do very well on your test on Friday. This is your review. Make sure that you copy all of this down so that you can do a great job. All right, have a great day, Tigers.